Hello everybody, this is the next video in a series of videos on Python programming for engineers. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. This is the second video with Python applications to probability and statistics. Today's topic is continuous distributions, more specifically the normal distribution. To draw numbers from a normal distribution there's a function called random dot standard normal. So random is the sub package name dot and the function name is standard underscore normal and then we give the size of the sample for example 10. We get 10 numbers randomly drawn from a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. We can calculate those. If we store well let's first Sure. Let me first show you that if you run this again, you get 10 different numbers. You get 10 different numbers every single time you run it. You can store the random numbers in an array, say A, and we can calculate the mean of A, print mean of A, mean of A, and print the standard deviation of A, let's call it STD of A, we call it STD because the function in Python is called STD for standard deviation. And you see that the mean of those 10 numbers is 0.24 and standard deviation is 1.3. They are not exactly 0 and 1 because it's only a sample of 10. If you run this again, we get a different mean and different standard deviation. If we draw more numbers, say 100, we get closer to 0 and 1 for the mean and standard deviation. If we make it a 1,000, we get even closer, and so on and so on. Um, what now if you want to draw random numbers from a normal distribution with a specified mean and standard deviation? To do that, what we do is we draw numbers from a standard normal distribution with mean 0 and then standard deviation 1. We multiply those numbers by the standard deviation we want, and we add the mean. So if you have a mean of mu equal to 20 and a standard deviation sigma or, or sig of 10, we can draw these numbers from a standard normal distribution multiplied by the standard deviation we want. So we do re sig times random dot standard normal 1000 and we add the mu we want. Then we can print what the mu and the standard deviation are and you see the mean of the this sample of 1000 numbers is 19.98 very close to the 20 we specified and the standard deviation is 10.16 there are many different ways of looking at data one of the ways is to calculate the percentiles and for that there is a function called percentiles percentiles. No, it's not called percentiles, it's called percentile. Now you might make that same mistake. It asks for the data, we also call that A by chance, and then the percentiles we want to calculate. For example, the 5 percentile, the 50 percentile, and the 95 percentile. It gives us back three numbers, the 5 percentile, the 50 percentile, and the 95 percentile. And what do these mean? Well, the 5 percentile means that 5% of all the data in A, so that's 5% of 1,000 numbers, fall below 3.7. 50% of the data falls below 19.5. So 19.5 is the median of the data. And 95% of the data falls below 37.4. Which means that if we talk about the 90% interval around the median that runs from 3.7 to 37.4 because 90 percent of the data falls between the 5 percentile and the 95 percentile. To <clears throat> visualize that there's many ways. One of the ways is a box plot. The box plot of A gives us this nice graph where now the numbers, the data, are shown here in the vertical axis. The red line is where the median is, which we had calculated as 19.5. The blue box runs from the 25 percentile to the 75 percentile. 
So 50% of the data falls within that blue box. It's also called the interquartile range. Another way to look at the data is to draw a histogram. For that, there's a function called hist. Hist of A gives us this nice plot. What hist does, or histogram does, is it divides the data in the number of intervals, counts how many data points fall within that interval, and draws a bar graph of the number of points within each interval. So this interval here, which runs roughly from 17 to 22, contains 270 data points out of the 1,000. Now the histogram decides itself where to put these intervals, and these intervals are called bins, and it also decides how many bins to use. It uses 10 bins by default. Um, and sometimes it's nicer to specify those. So if we do hist and we open the parentheses, we get some help. Help. You can specify the bins and the range, which is the minimum and the maximum value. So if you say histogram of the data A, you want to have 20 bins and they should run from range is equal to run from uh, minus 10, which is 30 less than the mean. The mean was 20 and 20 plus 30 is 50. So from minus 10 to 50, we should get a nice histogram. It looks like this. Um, now, on the vertical axis, we have the number of data points would also be nice to uh, plot there or print there the probability that a data point falls within a certain bin. Um, and for that, we have a, another keyword argument that's called normed. And if you set that equal to true, we get the diagram here. And it shows now that to fall within this interval, which runs from um, 20 to 17, uh, the probability is 0.045 or 0.046 roughly. What would also be nice is to now add the normal distribution that we use to draw these 1000 numbers to this graph. And for that, there is a function called norm.pdf. But we have to first import this norm function. So we do uh, from scipy.stats, that's another package that you have installed together with Canopy Express, we import a function called norm. Um, yeah, there we go, very good. And then we can uh, plot the normal distribution, probability density function, uh, and we can specify what mean we want and what standard deviation. So for example, for this case, say our x runs from minus 10 to 50. x is lin space minus 10 to 50 with 100 points. And our y is then the normal distribution, probability density function, PDF, calculated at all these function, functions x, or all these values x, um, with a mean, which is called the lock or location of 20 and a standard deviation, which is called the scale of 10. And if we now plot x versus y, make me make the line red, we get this nice distribution. This is the distribution we have drawn our samples from. If we now add our nice histogram to that same plot, here's our histogram function. Edit, paste, shift, enter. There we go. Here is the histogram of the 1000 data points we've drawn and the red normal distribution that we've drawn the numbers from. So we've learned a lot of new tools here. We learned how to use mean, standard deviation functions, percentiles, box plots, histograms. And of course we want to apply those tools to real data. Real data is often stored in files and files are often CSV files for comma-separated values. So far, we've used the load text or load txt file to import those data. And the load txt function is very useful, but has very basic functionality. And we want to use something more advanced. For that, there is a function called read CSV, which is specifically designed to read comma-separated value files. 
and that's provided in the pandas package. So we say from pandas import read CSV, and then if you do read, oh, let's run that, and then if we do read CSV, we open the parenthesis. You see, there's a lot of help on that. There's a lot of different um, keyword arguments you can enter for for your specific type of CSV file. We will only use two of those, and I'll do that by example. So we'll open up a example CSV file that is <coughs> that you will also have yourself, and it's called transport.csv. This is the data files file. You see, at the top line, you have the name of the columns. Country, car, bus, and rail. This data file shows the percentage of kilometers traveled by car, by bus, or by rail for four different countries. France, Germany, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. And the first line shows the names of the four columns. Then there is some extra information, in this case only one line, but it could have been more. And then there's the data. In France, 86.1% of the kilometers traveled are by car, 5.3% of the kilometers traveled are by bus, and 8.6% are by rail. And for Germany, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom, there are different values. We are going to import this CSV file with the read CSV function and then we're going to store it in a variable let's call it tran read csv we give it the name of the csv file which is called transport.csv with a t and we give it two additional keyword arguments to read it incorrectly we want to skip this row here and this row, although it says here is number two, in Python numbering, it's number one because the very first one is zero, zero, one, two, and so forth. So we want to say skip rows is equal to one between square brackets. <coughs> that could be more than one number, right? If there's more lines you want to skip. And we have a second um, keyword argument skip initial vet initial space equals true what does that mean well if you look at these names here of these columns that says here comma space car so if you would read this with the read csv file it would think the name of the column is space and then the letter car you don't want that space in before in be uh, before the word car so you say skip initial space is true it will skip those we import this and now this trend is a data frame and data frames are very cool things for example you can access every column separately trend dot country are the countries that we've imported france germany now and the united kingdom train trend dot car are the values um, in the car column, 86.1, 85.2, and so forth. Let's see, 86.1, 85.2, and, and so on. Uh, you can also calculate, do data on these, on these, or you can do manipulations on these. You can calculate the mean of trend.car, and you get the mean number of kilometers traveled are 86.475 in those four countries. You can treat these columns of this data frame trend just like you treat arrays that will make your life much easier you don't have to remember what number a certain column is you can just call the column by name and um, which will avoid a lot of mistakes that was all i have for you today i hope to see you next time